覚してるな。うん。はい。Um, so, hello everyone.、Uh, my name is Ga Kuzanova and I'm a senior lecturer、um, at our university.、Um, the Department of International Relations and、um, the International Laboratory on World Order Studies and the New Regionalism, in cooperation with the School of Asian Studies of the National Research University High School of Economics, is holding a joint session of Eurasian online seminar and China seminar today. Our guest is a, a very old friend and a renowned Japanese expert on international relations, Russian and CIS politics, and history professor Nobuo Shimotomai.、Nice. The topic of his talk is very fascinating Japan and the origins of the Cold War. I'm going to give a little introduction to Shimotomai sensei, which doesn't give honor to all of what he's done for. Um, Russo Japanese relations.、Uh, Shimotomai sensei is a professor,、um, is professor emeritus at the Faculty of Law and Politics at Hosei University in Tokyo and a specially invited professor at Kanagawa University. Professor Shimotomai was born in Sapporo.、Um, in 1971, he graduated from the Faculty of Law of the University of Tokyo and in 1978 received his legum doctor, LLD, from the same faculty. Um, he taught at Seike and Tokyo universities and did research in Moscow and the UK, University of Birmingham.、Uh, from 1988 until 2019, he was professor at Jose University.、Um, 1992 to 94, he was a visiting fellow at the Russian Research Center, currently Davis Center for Russian and Euro- Eurasian Studies,、um, at Harvard University and the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars in Washington, D.C. Um, afterwards, from、um, 1998 to 2001, he was associate writer at Asahi Shimbun.、Um, 2002 to 2004, he served as president of the Japanese Association of the International Relations, and in 2005, vice president of Asian Political Science Association. Professor Shimotomai has authored about 30 books and more than 100 articles and monographs.、Um, his major publications include. Um, Soviet politics and trade unions, a political has- history of the NIP,、um, Gendai Soren Seiji,、um, or contemporary Soviet politics, that is in Japanese,、um, Moscow under Stalinist rule, 1931 to 34,、um, and the state owned by the party,、um, that is also in Japanese, Moskva i k i m o s u n Um, a History of Russo Japanese Relations. That is a very recent one in 2019. Yeah.、Um, we're very happy to welcome here、uh, Professor Shimotomai today.、Um, and delighted to,、um, we're proud of such a long standing cooperation with you. So, Professor Shimotomai,、um, the, the floor is yours. Very much look forward to what you have to say today. Thank you very much, Olga. Thank you very much,、uh, Sasha. And、uh, it's a very honor to be invited to such a prestigious Eurasian seminar uh, <clears throat> on an uh, online uh, way. Uh, and uh, I first met uh, with uh, Alexander or Sasha、uh, some 33 years ago in Nahotka、uh, when the,、uh, Gorbachev began to open up. The Far East. Then、um, Alexander was one of the organizers of a、uh, seminar there. So it so happened that、uh, I first visited uh, Rajivost- uh, not uh, Rajivostok, but Nahotka. And、uh, after visiting Nahotka, went, we went to uh, Moscow uh, in the perestroika period、uh, to see. You are a distinguished professor,、uh, ambassador,、uh, Rukin, and, and others. So,、uh, also,、uh, I first visited Moscow as a graduate student in 1975 when、uh, actually uh, I, I stayed in Moscow State University dormitory,、uh, just in front of Chinese embassy. But at that time, the timing was such that the、uh, Soviet Chinese relation was so bad. And、uh, when one famous Japanese 
a Chinese expert came to Moscow, she said, uh, I will never visit Beijing, uh, partly because of the sanction from the Chinese. Uh, <clears throat> how things has drastically changed in these uh, 30 or 40 years, or it, or it's almost a miracle. Now, uh, Russia and China is a um, uh, very, very honeymoon period. Uh, and the detente or untant, or uh, uh, some people may even say so um, things are changing quite uh, dramatically. Uh, so so uh, <clears throat> as a historian who, who happened to be <coughs> born in, in Japan, so Russo-Japanese relation or Soviet-Japanese relation is also changing quite dramatically. And thanks to uh, uh, Orientalists uh, in Moscow, we could accomplish a lot of things along with uh, Soviet history. And actually, I'm very, very thankful uh, not only uh, uh, looking some and others, uh, we are thankful for the uh, cooperation with Mugi Moscaras, who uh, helped me to make a publication of uh, Soviet Russo uh, Russo Atnoshenie na parallel format. This was just uh, translated uh, into English. Uh, from Buril uh, Goran, uh, so uh, <clears throat> we we could uh, 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 in this book almost forty uh, historians, both from Moscow and Tokyo, could uh, make a kind of parallel analysis of uh, by uh, both uh, relationship between Tokyo and Moscow. So today, uh, uh, it's very honor, uh, and uh, uh, I should like to make a, a tentative analysis of, uh, of, uh, of the Cold War and Japan, and uh, how things uh, are developing in the Cold War uh, research. Actually, I have just uh, finished my uh, book on uh, Cold War in Japan, named uh, Nihon Rei Senshi. Uh, in this book, uh, I, I'm tra tracing how Japanese uh, Japanese uh, post Soviet uh, post uh, war period was shaped by the international uh, political climate uh, of, the, uh, of the Cold War. And but uh, I soon noticed that uh, things are not so simple. Uh, some people tend to see the Asian Cold War as a second front, but uh, things are not so simple. So uh, I wanted to give my very tentative, uh, primitive ideas that uh, post post imperium. Uh, uh, or post-Japanese imperial uh, spaces, there emerged a fierce struggle between the Soviet Union and the, uh, and the West or uh, United States to be exact. But before going into this process, uh, perhaps we had better uh, to understand what was, what was the Japanese uh, political international political history between Moscow and Tokyo uh, in the World War II. O always in the 20th century, the relationship between two uh, countries was complicated and had a dramatic uh, feeling towards each other uh, from the Japanese War uh, and the normalization in the 1925. And the Manchurian crisis has a uh, uh, surprise uh, starting, and he had uh, build up military capabilities in the Far East secretly. 
So it so happened that uh, starting the famine in the 30s uh, in Ukrainian North Caucasus and Kazakhstan was partly related to this war preparedness. Uh, uh, and <clears throat> after that, there came uh, Mon Han and others. But uh, curious uh, neutrality exists. Please show a uh, second. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, perhaps uh, uh, some might have seen um, Sokurov's uh, Sokuro trilogy, Lenin, Hitler, and the uh, Emperor Showa. I, I greatly admire, uh, of course, it is a, a fiction a film, uh, not a, uh, but uh, how such a uh, Filmmaker uh, Sokuros made a brilliant analysis of Japanese political uh, change uh, in the course of uh, World War II. Uh, you might have seen, or some might have seen this film, but uh, if you, you have not, uh, I strongly recommend as a prologue to uh, Cold War in Asia. Actually, uh, this film itself uh, shows how Japanese emperor, who was uh, regarded as a god or a sovereign, uh, generalismo, uh, but uh, uh, after the defeat of the World War II, he became a symbol of, of the uh, Japanese nation uh, by the downsizing of imperial uh, uh, political system into nation system. And he became a, a human being. Uh, this is the human drama, of course. But uh, if you see how things had changed in this uh, film uh, in August uh, 1945 uh, to January 1946, it so happened that uh, it is uh, also beginning of the Cold War, indeed. So uh, through this film, you can feel how dramatically Asian political, uh, international, and uh, relationship has changed. Yes, uh, the fact is that uh, Japanese and Japan and the Stalin's uh, Russia uh, had a mutual curious or phony, uh, phony neutrality, fact of neutrality guaranteed a kind of uh, symbiosis of the two countries, partly because Japanese was struggling with uh, United States while uh, Soviet Union and the Stalin's leadership had uh, quarreled uh, fiercely with Nazi uh, Germany and its allies. And uh, it so happened that uh, Japan and Germany was allies, but it's a curious symbiosis. So, <clears throat> so this film also suggests how Japan accepted US dominance, General MacArthur, uh, uh, and uh, how Japan's political system trans transformed. And uh, in this process, very, very interesting things happened. In, uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, of course, uh, without a definition of what is Cold War, uh, we cannot uh, identify what is the real problem or what is the problem for each historian. But uh, I, I made three parameters is very important for understanding the Cold War. I don't want to talk about uh, what, what is today's situation. Uh, from a Cold War point of view, but uh, I'm strictly uh, confined, uh, restricting on uh, his, as a historian. But uh, uh, in this uh, in this August um, six, six to 15th, things have changed quite dramatically. 
uh, yes, uh, this uh, pact of neutrality exists almost four years, and uh, uh, Japan's uh, it is uh, quite quite coincident that uh, Japan's attack over Pearl Harbor on seventh. Uh, following uh, and uh, in this process, uh, famous Richard uh, Zoge informs Japan's uh, going uh, to uh, west. So uh, he, uh, Stalin could uh, accumulate uh, or made a counterattack against Hitler on 5th uh, December around Moscow. Uh, so, uh, so, so it so happened that this kind of neutrality was a guarantee of a relationship, curious guarantee. But uh, uh, in May 1945, Japan uh, had he, uh, had faced with the deteriorating situation. And the uh, uh, Japanese uh, elite, including uh, emperors uh, inner circles, began uh, contact with Ambassador Malik, uh, famous, uh, famous diplomat, and the Stalin's, uh, Stalin and the mortals' uh, favorite, and a very, very able uh, person. So uh, Japanese in, in a circle began at, uh, contact with Malik in Tokyo to make a kind of arbitration between allied powers or mediate with the allied powers on the possible uh, surrender of the Japan. Or <clears throat> And uh, at that time, Japanese uh, real uh, poli politics was uh, such that the uh, peace party, uh, the Japanese peace party consisted basically from Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, led by Togo or Shigenori Ko uh, Togo and uh, uh, Navy uh, led by uh, Prime Minister Suzuki Kantaro uh, he was also uh, emperor's uh, very, very uh, royal person. And the uh, Admiral Yonai, former prime minister, this peace person has uh, countered with uh, the army. Next, please. Uh, this uh, this gentleman is uh, less known, but a very important person for understanding uh, the end of the World War II and the beginning of the uh, Cold War. So, uh, the, uh, Yonai, uh, Prince, uh, this uh, person, Yonai, was in <coughs> St. Petersburg uh, in the uh, February a revolution period as a military attaché. So he, he could speak a perfect Russian. He loved uh, Pushkin. And uh, ab above all, he was never prosecuted as a war tr tribunal uh, from neither from Americans nor uh, Stalin. He was, uh, and so he, he retired smoothly and dies, but he plays a very important transitional period, uh, and partly because he understands uh, that uh, in order to stop the war, uh, uh, the main uh, adversary was the Japanese uh, military uh, army. So, uh, so uh, it so happened that he he appro approaches uh, with uh, in, 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 in the internal circles of the palace emperor uh, to uh, Moscow. But, uh, uh, but of course, uh, time, uh, timing was such that uh, uh, Japan's uh, the collapse of the empire was imminent. So uh, uh, this uh, uh, star approach towards Stalin was uh, ill-fated. What is 
uh, more important was the uh, emergence of a nuclear bomb as a political weapon or symbol of the Cold War confrontation. So uh, on the 6th uh, August, uh, Americans uses uh, this as a weapon and is followed by Nagasaki. Uh, all, all people know this uh, simple fact. The, uh, the fact is that uh, in between Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Soviet Red Army came, uh, according to the Yalta secret uh, protocol, and almost 1,700,000 Red Army came. And so it was a kind of double punch. And uh, uh, to persuade emperor, Yonai argued that this is a very, very important uh, or uh, province. Uh, even he mentioned it is a providence. So, uh, so, uh, so uh, the uh, war party uh, on, on the uh, two uh, supreme big uh, six uh, meetings, which uh, took place on 14th of August, uh, the uh, still uh, three or uh, six was uh, uh, against the peace uh, negotiation. Uh, but finally, it was Emperor himself uh, who decided uh, this war, although his real power was always uh, very, very symbolic uh, from the uh, beginning of the Japanese uh, political history of Meiji Restoration. He, he was always uh, symbolic, but uh, at this time, he, it was he, Emperor uh, Hirohit, uh, Hirohito, uh, who uh, decided to end uh, this uh, move. What is still important was that the Yonai, Konoe, eh, and uh, Togo was a pro-Russian faction. But uh, because of the participation of Soviet Red Army, all these people uh, immediately uh, transformed into pro-American faction. And uh, uh, within uh, uh, ten, uh, several days, almost the Japanese elite uh, were, were forced to surrender, but uh, uh, accepted the, the, uh, the pro-American position. Of course, uh, there was still uh, very, very tough negotiation, uh, even among uh, the allied powers, London, Molotov uh, and the Americans and the uh, British people, British uh, diplomats, politicians took place. And uh, next, please. So, uh, 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 which was more important for the uh, surrender of Japan, uh, atomic bomb? Or, or Red Army that became uh, and uh, that became and is a very uh, interesting historical uh, debate. Uh, Sasha Alexander uh, Lukin's uh, good friend uh, Hasegawa uh, of Santa Barbara uh, recently has argued that the impact of Soviet participation, Red Army's participation, Wasilewski is uh, law uh, was is very important but uh, <clears throat> while uh, pro-american historians uh, tend to regard uh, atomic uh, bomb was more important in determining uh, the end of the uh, world war two but but uh, uh, what 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 is more important in this uh, debate is that uh, this is the beginning of the uh, Stalin's uh, rearmament, or uh, Stalin's became more uh, uh, threatened by the 
American uh, revolution of military affairs, part one, uh, atomic, uh, partly because uh, Stalin, of course, knew quite well uh, the, what was uh, atomic bomb, but at that time there was no uh, preparedness of, of the Soviet elite uh, until then uh, yeah, uh, to prepare atomic bomb. So within two weeks time, starting how to make a bomb, decision to make a bomb uh, uh, on 20th August. So uh, starting, starting asks uh, Tokyo embassy, uh, actually uh, diplomatic relation was already broken. So, but Mr. Iwano, a famous military attaché uh, of Tokyo uh, reports and Mar uh, Mariko follows uh, how Hiroshima Nagasaki uh, disaster uh, was conceived, how, uh, how uh, these new weapons are going to change the uh, character of the war, or perhaps uh, massive uh, Soviet mobilization, uh, how to give way to developing a new uh, type of bomb. That was the result of, of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Of course, uh, what is a more uh, striking fact uh, is that, next please. Next please. <clears throat> oh, uh, this is uh, uh, Togo and what is, uh, Togo was a uh, Korean by uh, ethnic origin. And uh, he, he met Lenin uh, in, in the World War I period. He was very, very uh, highly regarded diplomats. And the Moroto uh, even uh, saves his life, although he was sentenced to, uh, to a class or, or, or tribunal. But but uh, I, I don't want to go to, into this. Next, please. The more important is that uh, uh, starting, uh, starting the role uh, uh, over the Japanese occupation and the uh, 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 atomic bomb issue and the geopolitical uh, contest between uh, Soviet Union and the uh, United States had to be uh, settled uh, a mass. So what, what's the imperative of Stalin in this particular respect? He had, uh, uh, Stalin had no uranium uh, on the domestic uh, to, uh, to develop uh, the atomic bomb. So uh, at that time, uh, under the uh, Red Army's control, only Bulgaria, uh, East uh, Germany, and, and uh, 38 par uh, above uh, North Korea, 38 parallel uh, above the 30 par had, uh, had some uh, uranium. So starting how to mobilize uh, this uh, raw material for making a bomb that uh, became a sine qua non for making a new challenge of nuclear age. So starting uh, at that time, uh, Japan was occupied by uh, Americans, while uh, the other part was uh, under the control of uh, Commander Vasilevsky and the Kuril Islands was not mentioned. Uh, there was no clear cut uh, arise, uh, clear cut <coughs> uh, policy. Uh, what is more important is that uh, on, on 15, 15th August, uh, both uh, Americans and the Stalin's uh, they should make in body uh, tentatively uh, uh, demarcate the 38 at uh, the 38 parallel famous uh, American uh, military and the diplomatic leader Dean Rusk at the time was uh, army uh, general uh, official, but it was he who 
uh, demarcate this line. So, so uh, uh, it reminds me in the Ukrainian situation uh, today uh, with the Korean situation after uh, the defeat of the World War II by Japanese. So uh, demarcation was made, uh, but uh, uh, situation and uh, the Americans uh, never reached at that time uh, to the north, uh, uh, to the south of uh, Korean Peninsula. Uh, and the Soviet was, uh, Soviet sent the 25th Army, uh, whose uh, leader was Shutiko, who was a Jidano uh, uh, son in law. Uh, he control, began to control occupy. Uh, first, he wanted to uh, struggle with uh, Japanese, but Japan had surrendered. So uh, this uh, army had to ma make uh, occupation role. And uh, Shutiko, uh, within three years, became ambassador, partly because uh, the deteriorating situation between US and Russia. Uh, so uh, two independent uh, this, uh, government uh, existed, uh, each claiming that the United, Na <clears throat> United Nations should be, uh, United countries should be built up. But uh, uh, so it so happened that uh, one young translator, uh, Kim Son Ju, uh, who was in in, in Habarovsk was uh, sent uh, separately uh, to uh, first as a kind of translator, then uh, tentative uh, prime minister, uh, and it was Kim Il Sung, the beginning of the Kim Il Sung's uh, role. But uh, he was trained by Japanese expert uh, Kavijenko. Uh, it so happens that within 10 years, he became a, a communist, Soviet Communist Party Japan desk. Uh, but he was very active uh, in Tokyo in the Korean War period. So, uh, I'm sorry, brother, uh, <laughs> lengthy uh, contribution of time for. Uh, but uh, so what is important is that uh, uh, by the uh, December uh, meeting of three foreign ministers, uh, US, USSR relation was so deteriorated. So uh, Stalin had to solve uh, the issue of uh, both nuclear atomic bomb and uh, uh, concentrated on, on the Eastern European situation, partly because there was some, some uh, raw material for building uh, atomic bomb. So uh, it so happened that uh, uh, in this December meeting, uh, well, for the ministry, ministers, the end of, of the rise was announced and uh, uh, starting in how to resort to build a bomb uh, by the uh, by a Bulgarian Romanian uh, monopoly of power. So uh, the, the politics uh, of uh, politics of East Europe, East European uh, Cold War uh, was a kind of swapped by the Japanese occupation by Americans. So General MacArthur was a very, very uh, de facto Japanese uh, emperor, <laughs> to be exact. Uh, and yes, uh, of course. Uh, uh, so, but uh, Japan was had to downsize the size, the political system. So, but uh, post imperium spaces had to be managed by the allied powers, uh, by the uh, agreement of both Yalta and Potsdam. Uh, but the uh, allied 
if I read the powers had now a uh, different perspective and uh, uh, within the, the, the next, next please. So, uh, so uh, over the uh, post Japan, Japan Imperial uh, spaces begins a kind of civil war or uh, partly because Japan has left uh, so many weapons and the Soviet had retreated uh, from, uh, from Manchuria, uh, but uh, he had left some, uh, uh, they had left uh, Soviet weapons. So uh, in China uh, began civil war for obvious reason. In Korea, two Koreans emerges parallelly and each claims to be um, uh, wanted to monopolize the power. So, uh, so uh, in the post, uh, uh, post, uh, post imperial uh, spaces uh, began uh, political spheres, political struggles between former allies, uh, USSR, UK and uh, uh, Americans. Bas basically, Americans and the Br British are uh, united. But uh, uh, as uh, Mao Zedong uh, uh, came very near to <coughs> uh, uh, access to power, uh, there was discrepancy between United States and uh, Americans, uh, Americans and the United Kingdom, partly because uh, uh, British wanted to use a card of Chitoisation uh, to, uh, to uh, recognize uh, Mao Zedong's government uh, uh, by uh, admitting uh, political uh, this uh, system. Uh, but Americans, uh, Americans failed to do this. So there's a seed of uh, conflict. And this was uh, used by uh, Kim Il-sung uh, for his own sake. Uh, he also wanted to uh, change of ties. Uh, so uh, Mao Zedong uh, victory and uh, Kim Il-sung's Victory both king uh, became a start of the Korean War, uh, but, but but in the process of Korean War, oh, oh, it is already taken for granted uh, but, uh, <clears throat> the uh, Kim Il Sung's adventurous move first was defeated by the uh, uh, unprecedented move of, of General MacArthur. Uh, partly because Marik at that time was uh, ambassador to most uh, United States, uh, United Nations, but uh, um, uh, starting uh, uh, forces him to uh, <coughs> uh, refrain from attending by uh, using this card. So, uh, so it became very serious conflict. Uh, once Mao, uh, Kim Il Sung was defeated, but now again uh, Mao sent uh, what is called uh, volunteer army, almost uh, one million uh, soldiers, basically from Guomindan people. So, uh, so uh, it was a very very serious challenge to uh, UN. Uh, UN uh, generals. So uh, MacArthur wanted to use atomic bomb uh, over uh, China uh, for Eastern Soviet Union and the Korean Peninsula itself. So uh, it was at that time uh, United Kingdom uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, Atari went to Washington to stop this process. So, uh, uh, so General MacArthur, who used to be an allied chief over Japan, uh, but uh, to remove from him from 
uh, decision making uh, in the uh, Korean situation, Korean war situation, uh, he's, he had to be removed from uh, his official uh, title of uh, Allied Powers Commander in Chief. So that was the reason why uh, American and British uh, decision making uh, urged Japan's independence. So that was the reason why uh, Japan could uh, become independent uh, by uh, making uh, uh, San Francisco Peace Treaty. Uh, at that time, uh, things are uh, rather complicated, but uh, 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 Gromyko was in San Francisco, but uh, he, he refrained from signing. Um, but, but if if uh, there was a, a talk between Malik and uh, uh, Dallas over the, the defeat of uh, over the uh, Japan's role and the Kuril Islands belonging. And, uh, there was uh, some movement uh, by the Americans to uh, rest uh, uh, Chinese uh, volunteer army uh, should participate to. So th there was some move to hand over as Yalta uh, agreement uh, stipulated uh, on, on the Kuli uh, 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 legal status, but because uh, starting um, and uh, Mao Zedong's move uh, uh, had uh, mobilized uh, this Brantti army, uh, so he couldn't. Uh, Stalin uh, wanted to use Japanese Communist Party as a uh, kind of second front. So, uh, so Japanese Communist Party was mobilized on this and the uh, Japanese Koreans in Japan uh, uh, was also uh, involved in this uh, struggle, armed um, struggle of the communists. So uh, Americans, mm, even George Kennan and Roberts uh, had advice towards uh, Tokyo's basic decision making that was uh, gas coin from the uh, United Kingdom and uh, uh, American diplomats who watched how Japanese communism uh, is influenced both Koreans and, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, by Chinese and the Soviet, uh, and Stalin um, forced Japanese Communist Party put to be uh, armed. Uh, it is a kind of uh, double-edged policy uh, for the so San Francisco Treaty, uh, in the process of San Francisco Treaty, this Japanese Communist Party was used by Stalin. But of course, uh, that this of Stalin could end this uh, nightmare uh, and the peaceful transition uh, and uh, termination of the Korean War was uh, thus uh, arrow to the struggle. Uh, no, sorry, uh, only in the death of this particular start the decision making could pave the way a uh, peaceful transition to in, in Asian Cold War. And, and from this time, uh, the real Cold War began. Until then, there was a hot war, civil war uh, in the uh, post-Japanese imperial spaces. This is my uh, thesis. Thank you very much for hearing my poor English and poor uh, understanding of the situation. No, thank you very much, Shimotomai Sensei. This is wonderful. So, um, do we have any questions? So, if any of the participants would like to ask um, a question, could you please um, write down your name um, in the chat and we'll uh, call you out? Um, so I think Professor Looking, would you like to comment um, first? And then we'll give the participants some time. May I close the presentation? 
Um, or not. Well, I, I, it, should we keep it for now, for the time being? Maybe some of uh, us will okay. want to go back to the slides. I'm personally, I was personally very fascinated with your um, slides and the thesis, thesis as well, the argument. So, Professor Lukin. Yes, no, I, I just wanted to, okay, we have a question from Professor Tolaraya, but it's okay. No, that's a great presentation. I also wanted to say that Professor Simotama is a great expert on contemporary Russian Japanese relations and Japanese foreign policy. So if you want to ask something on that, you could also do that. But uh, my question is uh, not that much on the topic, but kind of personal. Uh, yes. I know Professor Toga, of course, mm -hmm. very, uh, very well, who is the, I think he's the grandson of that Togo you were yes, talking about. Yes, yes, yes. That's and uh, I was, it was strange to me, for me to hear that he was Korean. And I checked uh, spe uh, specifically and I found out that he is Korean because his uh, ancestors came, yes, came to, yeah. He came to Japan in the 16th century. That's so right. yeah. why is that you think important to stress that he's Korean after like 500 years already passed? It's it's interesting because, because in Russia, we wouldn't call somebody non-Russian who came to Russia 500 years ago. Actually, I don't remember what happened here 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you yes. very much. The Sasha, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and, uh, uh, the, the, there is a political myth uh, after World War II. Japan is an ethnically homogeneous country, basically consists of Japanese, of course, uh, but uh, some uh, six, uh, 600,000 uh, Koreans uh, and uh, Chinese, some Chinese, and the Ainu uh, is uh, is a, a minority groups. But uh, th this this political myth only emerged after World War II. Uh, before that, Japan had incorporated Korean, so uh, colonized for thirty five years. So uh, it was very natural that. Uh, Korean Japanese uh, as part of the Japanese. Uh, and uh, uh, so of course, uh, there's so called discrimination and uh, uh, other uh, oppressive measures for obvious reason, but uh, uh, still uh, there's a kind of notion or for example, Pak Chung-hee Pak Chung he was uh, had a Japanese name and the Manchurian he was uh, con uh, accept, conscripted as a uh, Manchurian uh, officer's uh, uh, school or something like that and and he was even uh, active leftist uh, in the uh, before uh, the Korean War. And uh, some uh, uh, people, uh, 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 there's some oppression um, by the Americans and the uh, uh, Korean government. And Pak Chung he was against that. And at that time, so many uh, uh, people, people revolted against uh, this uh, uh, American. Korean uh, domination and uh, people came to Japan uh, and the part of the North Co the people who again went to North Korea uh, in the late uh, 50s was this uh, Jeju people uh, who voluntarily came to Japan after after the, uh, the defeat of the Japan, Japan. So Korean-Japanese relation is so complicated. Uh, so uh, within, within Japanese community, now uh, co co Korean issues, uh, of course, po for politically, there are so many uh, gap between Seoul and, and, and 
<coughs> Pyongyang, of course, who is Tokyo, but uh, culturally very, very interesting uh, things are going to happen. Yeah, uh, happening, uh, going to happen, yeah. Thank you. Um, are we happy for to proceed to the next question, Professor Lukin, or would you like to yeah, discuss sure, this? We have some questions now. Oh, yes, we have Professor Tularaya who wanted to ask something. Hello. Um, you're still okay. muted. Okay. Okay, here now. Well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Smedamaya san for this very interesting and very uh, you know, impressive presentation of the recent history, which gives just a new angle of thinking to me. But however, I would like to share some knowledge, uh, which I well gathered over the years, which might be uh, useful or might well be considered. Uh, for, for one thing, uh, uh, well, in fact, the uh, division of uh, Korea uh, was agreed on well before the 15th of August. It was agreed in Yalta uh, between the leaders of the country. And there is a theory uh, that uh, Stalin wanted to separate, uh, to divide Japan, like, like, like Germany. Uh, but US strongly opposed this along with Churchill. And so he had to settle for Korea uh, in, in, a, in addition to some uh, East European nations. Uh, you have uh, mentioned. So uh, if the things would have turned uh, worse, then we might have a solace, uh Hokkaido still there. <laughs> there. Mm, well, mm, uh, so maybe uh, Professor Madame, I have heard something about it. Um, another thing is uh, uh, about uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Kim Son Ju, uh, Kim Il Son. Uh, you know that uh, he was uh, chosen from amongst many candidates by Stalin personally. And he said, This is the young guy uh, who looks good, who is good looking. So let him be the, uh, well, our sort of our guy in there. Uh, and um, this is also just, you know, a, a sort of uh, uh, historic joke because. Uh, no, no one at the time thought that uh, Kim Il Sung would become independent and would be uh, be given such a great role in the current history, and well, uh, will found a state that will be still there for more than seven decades. Well, abnormal as it is, and also I was very interested by the information that uh, Mr. Togo was well had Korean origin. Uh, but come to think of it, uh, maybe you know that in South Korea, there's a strong belief that uh, first Japanese emperors uh, who settled themselves in Nara, and Nara is the, Japan, uh, the Korean word for, uh, for country, uh, they were of Korean descent as well. But of course, it's not supported in Japan. Thank you. Thank you, Toru Thank you very Thank much you. for the comments. Thank you very much. Uh, I am uh, I'm always uh, greatly indebted uh, by uh, Russian uh, Korea, Koreanologists for their uh, contribution for understanding uh, uh, Korean Peninsula question. Uh, actually, uh, I have no objection. Uh, and the Japanese, uh, now Japanese historians are finding a lot of Korean, uh, Korean uh, roots uh, of Japanese samurai, even samurai. Uh, I, I'm now living in Musashi, Musashi no uh, Musa. Musa, uh, uh, this means samurai uh, in Korean wars. So uh, there is uh, so many Korean names in Tokyo, Ko Komae uh, and uh, Koryo, uh, uh, shrine Korea or Chinese colony Hata. So so now uh, Japanese uh, uh, Japanese ethnic origin is uh, debated from a different cultural uh, uh, networks. Uh, so it is not so simple nowadays uh, to identify what is Japanese. The second question uh, Toroya Sensei has uh, mentioned is that. Division of Japan 
uh, by Stalin and others. And uh, yes, uh, it is Khrushchev's memoir that uh, by July uh, 1945, uh, uh, Khrushchev was in favor for uh, Hokkaido's independent role. And what is quite interesting, uh, striking uh, thing is, is that uh, among the uh, uh, wartime student uh, revolts, uh, some you know, really uh, hoped or uh, accepted this idea and uh, Hokkaido became the independent country. So some, some radical student at the end of World War II went to Sapporo uh, or Hokkaido. Uh, so, so it's near from uh, the Soviet Union for obvious reason. So, uh, so Hokkaido independent movement was still hard. Even the Communist Party headquarter now located in uh, uh, Yoyogi, there was some movement to, to move uh, Japanese Communist Party headquarter. Of course, it, it was uh, situated in Beijing. You, you may know uh, the Japanese communist leader under the Korean War were basically uh, situated in uh, Beijing, uh, no, uh, Nosaka, Tokuda, and other. Uh, but uh, so, so uh, Hokkaido was another strong point, a stronghold for Hakamada san and others, uh, uh, communist leaders, I mean. So, so there's some movement uh, at that time uh, to divide. And they're starting even uh, negotiated with Truman on, on the divide of Hokkaido into two parts, but uh, Americans strongly uh, rejected this idea. Thank you. This is so fascinating. Um, I think Sergei Rachenko wanted to ask something as well, right? Um, could we unmute you? Is he still present? He was re-entering. Okay. okay, hello. How's that? How's that? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, Mother Maya Sensei, great to see you. Thanks for a wonderful presentation. Uh, actually, to follow up on that question that you've just touched upon about the division of Japan and occupation of Hokkaido, here's the question that, that, that bothers me, and I, I don't have the answer for it. Stalin was quite determined to land forces on Hokkaido. Then, of course, mm -hmm. came Truman's rebuttal, say, you're not allowed to do that. And he backed off. He backed off. He decided not to do it. So the big question here that I asked myself, I, I don't know the answer. I wonder what your sense of this is. Why did he decide not to do it? Why did he decide to back off? There are two possibilities. First, obviously, Hiroshima and Nagasaki had already happened. So was he intimidated by the US atomic bomb? Uh, if, if that's the case, then we should, you know, we should not accept uh, his words that atomic bomb is just another weapon, as, you know, as, as he would later claim. Uh, or was it because he wanted to maintain the Yalta framework and he felt that he still needed cooperation with the United States and division of influence and if he was you know, kindly pushed against in Japan, he better back off, otherwise the Americans would then ignore his interest elsewhere. What do you think? Well, thank you, Sergei, thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, this move is rather curious. I, I think uh, Stalin's famous uh, uh, address uh, uh, after the defeat of the Japanese militarism as a revenge uh, on Russo-Japanese war uh, has uh, some clue for understanding his mentality. Uh, of course, uh, Japan, uh, after the what is called the victory uh, of the Russo-Japanese war, uh, began to occupy the uh, southern part of Saharin. So uh, he, may, he wanted to make a kind of revenge on this process. So, but uh, at that time, Stalin had a huge task of so making bomb, atomic bomb, or to concentrate uh, for the next World War Three. So, so, so a kind of geopolitical game was no longer uh, 
the, his agendas uh, oh, oh, it's a kind of job against Americans, but uh, it was not a serious uh, challenge to uh, General MacArthur's occupation uh, of mainland Japan. And that's what, uh, so uh, by uh, so you are right. Yaruta agreement was uh, kind of sine qua non uh, still for Stalin's move. All right. Um, is that okay, Sergei? Or would you like to continue the discussion? I think it's okay. So we have a few more questions in the chat. The participants are really active, it seems. Um, so there's uh, Yegor Loginovsky, please, if you could un unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Well, can you hear me? Yes. Well, uh, thanks the organizers for providing me a possibility to ask Professor Simotomai. Yes. Professor Simotomai, I'm very much interested on the pro-Soviet figures you've mentioned earlier. You've said that those who belong to the Peace Party, such as Prince Konoe, Togo, and some other figures, try to connect to the Soviet Union, and uh, but, but later they lost their influence and uh, even switched uh, to the US side. Mm. Yes. Uh, so mm, the, the, the first small question is, mm, these uh, peace party figures, uh, wanted to uh, lean to the Soviet side rather to the US side purely from their uh, political suggestions as to make the Japanese role and position better or do they or do um, or had uh, any of them had uh, maybe pro-Soviet um, persuasions or even even communist persuasions because it's really uh, hard to imagine a top, uh, top mm -hmm. level Japanese police maker to be the mm -hmm. pro-Soviet figure, <laughs> you know. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Roginov-san. Uh, actually, the Japanese has a very, very ambiguous uh, feeling toward the Russians after the uh, Russo-Japanese war. Uh, 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 partly because uh, Japan won. Uh, after that, there are so many strong uh, uh, pro-Russian pro sentiment, even after the uh, revolution. So uh, culture, uh, for example, uh, uh, cultural elite of Japan was very, very pro-Soviet uh, or, or pro-Russian. Uh, Muhat uh, of Goriki or, or Chekhov was very, very welcomed by Japanese uh, in the Showa period. So, so that kind of uh, tradition, uh, pro-Russian, uh, not pro-Soviet, but and uh, even uh, among also Japanese uh, elite system was more inclined to German style. Uh, so uh, after the World War One, uh, Marxism became very, very popular in Japan too. The Konoe uh, himself was uh, influenced by a, that kind of uh, German Marxist tradition coupled with uh, some uh, feeling toward the Soviet Union. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, Japanese local aid, elite uh, or communist elite, uh, you can find so many rich a person uh, who was uh, educated as a German Marxist and accepted Soviet communism uh, at the first stages. That uh, the basically social they became socialist or 
uh, even um, Japanese consulted uh, in the uh, after World War II. But for example, Takeshita san, uh, uh, Takeshita san's uh, family was related to German Marxist tradition. Or uh, Yon, 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 Yonohara san, a uh, famous uh, communist leader who came from the Land Road of rich person uh, who uh, sympathetic towards Marxist, Marxist ideas. So that kind of pro-Soviet uh, mentality existed. So uh, even within uh, uh, Higash Kuninomiya, the first post-Japanese prime minister uh, for, for uh, two, two, two weeks, two months, who was very, very anti-Americans and uh, several times contacted with the Soviet embassy or Soviet uh, office in Tokyo uh, after World War II. So, so that kind of uh, ambiguous uh, sentiment towards Russia existed. That was part of the reason why the Japanese Peace Party uh, approached Moscow. They are, they are a very, very practical person. And they wanted to save emperor by the help of Stalin. Uh, but Stalin was the general secretary of the Communist Ideas, who is uh, against the monarchy system that was translated into emperor system by Japanese communists. So, uh, so it was almost uh, a contradiction itself. But uh, so curious symbi symbiosis ended by uh, August 15th. And after that, almost the Japanese uh, diplomats and uh, former military or Navy pe people uh, went to the uh, United States uh, politically. But, but, but ambiguous situation remained. That is my understanding. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Um, I did skip one question from Ram Kumar Mishra as well. Um, would you like to unmute yourself, please? So I'm pressing here, ask to unmute. Mr. Mishra? Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I yes. thank you so much. I have a very straight question. Yes. And that yes. question is that whether Japanese they uh, they went in for the U.S. connection because uh, there were some commonalities in cultural factors. Were they impressed by the cultural factors, or were the cultural okay. factors brought them together? Oh, yes, perhaps. Japanese uh, Japanese accepted the American occupation first, but at that time uh, public mood was not so happy with this. But uh, benign uh, occupation system helped Japanese economic uh, development uh, in the fifties and sixties. So it so happened that the American pop culture came. I must say, uh, and uh, through uh, pop culture, Hollywood, uh, and others, by other means, uh, Japanese accepted the high quality of American, uh, uh, what is called affluent society by uh, girl race. So uh, Japan regard how rich is American uh, society and culture. So of course, uh, the, the traditionalists who regard American pop culture as a very second class or, or uh, not so uh, highly qualified, but uh, uh, basically uh, Japan's middle class uh, who was cherished under the American uh, impact uh, has accepted this uh, 
kind of uh, pop culture and uh, American way of standard films, music, uh, and others. So I, I think uh, uh, it's rather uh, rather uh, things are rather different. Uh, I, I came from the six. Uh, I was a student in the sixties when uh, American engaged in Vietnam War, that was very, very unpopular, both uh, conservatives, Japanese, and the radical Japanese. And uh, Mao Zedong's uh, Red Cross Squad was more <laughs> popular uh, among the uh, student youth uh, at that time. Of course, uh, that never uh, prolonged. But so, the Japanese is rather uh, kind of hybrid person, uh, hybrid culture. Uh, we accept a lot of things. Uh, and the famous uh, uh, Japanese socialist said, uh, uh, Scandinavian social welfare, uh, American democracy, a British two-party system uh, and the welfare and the uh, society is the uh, model for the socialism. That is a uh, standard uh, version. The, the, of course, American. So uh, Japanese have forget forgot uh, atomic bomb. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> great, I think. Great. Right. And, uh, same, ob same observations we had from G.C. Allen. G.C. Allen mm -hmm. was the first person who went to Japan and wrote on Japanese economic history. And then mm -hmm. he comes out with factors which brought Japan and the uh, U.S. together in the quest of a higher R&D. R&D, yes. Thank you Thank you so much for participating. Okay, so um, we have um, a one, uh, well, perhaps slightly controversial subject um, that we've already discussed in the chat briefly with one of our participants. Um, so he's asking, um, why is it the case that um, the, the members of this um, unit 731, they became um, entrepreneurs in Japan, they became doctors and they didn't have um, the appropriate, as it would seem from our perspective, punishment. Um, for their crimes. So I always tell my students that it's because, uh, well, because this question always comes up. So <laughs> I always tell my students that it's because many of them were granted immunity in exchange for information, uh, such as medical facts or otherwise relevant. Uh, but maybe Professor Shimotomai, maybe you have some uh, something to add to this as well. Oh, actually, you mean uh, 731? The, yes, uh, unit, yeah. Unit, uh, yes. Uh, actually, uh, this issue became tough uh, after the Korean War. The Japanese uh, oppositionists, uh, uh, along with Chinese uh, and the Soviet uh, people, uh, began to criticize and the Korean uh, too. The, that was related to the a awkward situation even to this day, uh, partly because Japan has a serious question of vaccinization, but we cannot produce vaccine, uh, partly because uh, there's some control uh, by, uh, by uh, both uh, US and Americans and uh, uh, Soviet and Chinese public opinion that the Japanese uh, public uh, health should be uh, carefully controlled. So that became the origin of this attitude, I think. Mm. Uh, I don't know, we can still maintain, uh, still uh, compared with Americans, um, uh, we are very, very uh, moderate on the damage uh, by coronavirus, but still we can, uh, I mean, we are not sure whether we can um, open uh, Olympic games this year. 
Okay, so uh, we have another one from Professor David Wolf as well. So if you would like to um, finish off our wonderful session with your question, please. Are you able to unmute yourself? Uh, sorry, I'm going to have to. Got okay. it. Uh, um, I wanted to follow up on uh, Professor Rodchenko's earlier question <clears throat> regarding the, uh, the uh, called off invasion of Hokkaido, um, since I live in Sapporo and therefore I kind of take it personally. Um, but um, the question was slightly different. Um, in thinking about the Yalta Agreement, there's three countries that are important in the Alta Agreement that are mentioned, the Japan, the Japan part, the China part, and the Mongolia part. Um, for Stalin, which, which of those three do you think is the, the most important? And do you think that changes over time? Because we, we, hear, we hear him referring to Yalta, certainly right up to the, the beginning of when he meets with Mao Zedong, he says, to hell with Yalta. Right. So he's really thinking about Yalta, at least until 1950. Um, do you think that those three countries shift in priority for him in the period from 1945 to 1950 and why? Well, thank you, uh, Dave, uh, David. Thank you very much. It's very, very important. Perhaps for starting the uh, Soviet Red Army, uh, no one hand's uh, impact was so huge. Uh, why Molotov has highly regarded Togo as diplomat? Partly because uh, of no more Han, impact of no more Han. Uh, the, the, the outer Mongolia was the only country uh, which Stalin uh, had arrived. Uh, in fact, uh, subjugated uh, at that time. So uh, Japan subjugated Manchuria and uh, Molotov and uh, Stalin uh, subjugated uh, Outer Mongolia. So it so happened that the fierce battle took place and uh, it so happened, uh, Japanese had an uh, inferiority complex at that time, but uh, the fact was that uh, Red soldiers' damage was uh, more uh, greater in number than Japanese uh, damages. So I think the uh, Mongolian question was number one for the, what is called uh, Far East uh, uh, article of the secret protocol. All right, day. thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you very much. So I'm afraid we'll have to finish off here, but thank you all for participating. Thank you so much for your question. And it's always questions. And it's always wonderful to see that Shimoto Mai Sensei is so versatile and knows everything about everything. So he's a historian, he's an international relations specialist and whatnot. Um, so we very much look forward to continuing our cooperation with you. Um, and um, yeah, I hope everyone has a lovely rest of the week. Thank you all for participating. Thank you for the Thank invitation. You Thank you for hearing my poor uh, uh, address. Thank you very much. No, See no, 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 no. Don't worry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank See you. you.